Hey everyone, Paul Bird Rally reporting. You've probably noticed elsewhere in the channel we've been hitting the action or point of view cameras pretty hard. In this video we're going to do a detailed drill down on this one. This is the GoPro Hero 5. So let's go right to the studio and get started. First, the mechanical design of the Hero 5. It's quite a bit different than the Hero 4. For one thing, it's slightly larger and a little bit heavier by about 1.2 ounces. Here are the two side by side. The Hero 4 had this metallic silver finish, while the 5 has a resilient, non-reflective, rubberized surface treatment. Like the 4, the 5 has two controls, a mode button on the side of the case and the shutter record button on the top. The mode button also steps through the top level menus, and I'll get to those details in a minute. The biggest change over the Hero 4 is that the camera itself is waterproof. So to keep the weather out, you don't need anything more than this skeleton case. This has pros and cons. The waterproof integrity relies on these gasketed doors, one on the bottom for the battery and SD card access, and one on the side for the charge port and HDMI access. I'm not a fan, and I'm not so sure this won't be an issue for GoPro 5 users. And here's why. Unless you want to remove the camera from the skeleton mount and open the door for each charging session, you'll want to leave it in the mount. But that requires removing the door. It has a small rod that engages a channel hinge in the door, and there's a trick to getting it on and off. In doing so, I broke the door, and I suspect I'm not the only one to have done this. At first, both doors are difficult to open, but they get easier the more you use them. And that illuminates another possible problem with this camera. On the GoPro forum, I found a couple of complaints about the camera leaking water to the extent that it shows up as a bubble inside the control window here. I won't be surprised if GoPro has a little more work to do on these doors. And by the way, for aviation use, you'll want a neutral density filter, sometimes called a prop filter. I have a couple here for the Hero 4. Do you think they might fit the 5? Oh, hell no. So another 20 to 50 bucks for a filter. For the time being, I'm just using a piece of ND filter film. One complaint about the previous Hero models is that they were susceptible to uncommanded operation. Specifically, the shutter record button would get bumped and start recording, or the mode button would be inadvertently pushed, switching to an unwanted camera mode. Every GoPro user has a pile of unintended selfies or a card full of useless video. Here's one of mine, a nine minute video of the inside of my jacket pocket. On the Hero 5, GoPro addresses this in two ways. The buttons are now flush and it takes a determined push to activate the command. It's almost impossible to do it accidentally. Like the Garmin Verb, the Hero 5 has a quick record option. Just push the shutter button and the camera will begin recording whether it's powered up or not. Push it again to stop recording. As with the Hero 4, the mode button cycles through the top level function choices, and once you've selected the function, you can use the touch screen to page through the options. From the video page, you can select the resolution or frame rate you want. You can also select the field of view. Not all resolutions offer full frame rate capability or all field of view options. Here's a table that shows the Hero's 5 complete list of shooting options. As you can see, it has generous choices for resolution, frame rate, and field of view. It actually has a little more flexibility than the Garmin Verb Ultra 30 I reviewed in another video here on the channel and in the November 2016 issue of Aviation Consumer. As with the Garmin Verb Ultra, the Hero 5 can be controlled via this touchscreen on the back and compared to previous Hero cameras, it's much easier to use once you get the menu structure down. For example, if you want to switch resolutions, you just touch that on the screen, then move the display to make the choice. Same is true for frame rates or field of view. But for aviation use, the better way is to use the wireless app, which I'm running here on an iPad, so it's a little easier to see. The app works well, but I'm not so sure how robust it is. I had my share of difficulties getting and keeping it paired to an iPhone. For what it's worth, GoPro supports the camera well with live phone and chat. You might need that from time to time. When you're shooting video, workflow and file transfer is a big part of the process, and for that, the Hero 5 has two options. It has cloud capability that transfers files automatically when the camera is in range of a wireless network. You can then retrieve these and edit them on the fly in GoPro's quick editing app. That's fine as far as it goes, but the camera has to be plugged in and fully charged in order for the cloud transfer to happen, and it's not exactly transparent. Also, GoPro charges you five bucks a month for the cloud service. 
So that leaves the option of moving files via USB hardwire. That's easy enough to do, but the GoPro cameras don't work as mass storage devices, so that means you either remove the card for transferring the files, and that's a non-starter, or use GoPro's dedicated utility, which automatically transfers the files. This works well enough, but it's not my preferred way of moving media. I like to see the actual files and put them right in the directory where I want them. This requires just a little more work than I think it should. Like the Garmin Verb, the GoPro Hero 5 has voice control, and here's how it works. GoPro start recording. Camera starts. GoPro stop recording. Camera stops and writes the file. The commands are pretty reliable, and it works from quite a distance, 20 or 30 feet, but I didn't find it that useful either in the cockpit or shooting around the airport or the airplane. Now, the GoPro version is a little bit more flexible than the Verb version, but the, both of them work pretty well. Let's go back to the airplane and grab some footage, but before we do that, a tiny little quirk. Any aviation video, you're going to want audio, probably from the radios or the intercom, unless you're shooting from the outside. To do that on the GoPro Hero 5, you're going to need the GoPro mic adapter. It's a $50 item, not available yet. So for this video, I'm shooting with the GoPro Hero 5, but recording with the Verb Ultra 30 for audio. Sorry, GoPro, you're not making this easy. Also, one other thing worth mentioning is that the power connector requires a USB-C type cable. Now, this is an emerging standard, and the good thing about it is it plugs in either way, but you're going to have to carry around a specialized cable for both charging and for the audio adapter. Let's start with a look at some uh, 4K from the GoPro, and the GoPro does a pretty, uh, pretty good job with 4K, as you can see from this imagery. Uh, however, if you don't have a 4K television or a 4K monitor, you might not see the full benefit of it. So you might ask yourself, well, why 4K? Well, one reason is that if you're going to crop out on the imagery, the 4K has a lot more pixels to deal with. So let's take a look at what this image, this same image, looks like cropped out to 125%. And this is what the image looks like cropped out to 125%. Still looks pretty good. If you look at it on a large monitor, you might see a little degradation, but overall, it's pretty impressive imagery. So what do the Garmin and the GoPro look like side by side? Well, that's what you're looking at here. Uh, the image to me is comparable. Uh, I might give a slight edge to the GoPro, but uh, I could pick one over the other. For aviation use, most of your shooting is probably going to be in 1080p, and this is what the GoPro looks like in 1080p at uh, 60 frames per second. The GoPro has five different uh, field of view selections, and this one is called super wide, and this is something you might use uh, inside the cockpit or on the wing if you want a wide view for whatever reason. Otherwise, a regular wide view is also a good choice. I don't really have time to go through all the views, but here's another view that GoPro has. It's called linear, and what linear is is a super wide view corrected for fisheye effect, so it removes the aberration from the edges of the frame. It's kind of a nice option to have uh, if you don't want any distortion in the imagery. Well, from the foregoing, you might conclude that I'm not going to recommend the Hero 5 for aviation use, and you'd be right. There's three reasons for this. First of all, in any aviation video, you're going to want to get audio into the camera. You can do that with a Hero 5, but it takes that $50 module, and it's just a little bit too awkward. Second, I had just enough trouble with the wireless function in the app on this camera to make it far more frustrating than it really ought to be. Last, although the GoPro Hero 5 has GPS, you can't use it to the extent you can on the Garmin Verb Ultra 30. You can't overlay all that nice aviation data, and I think you're going to want that. You can find a full review on these cameras in the November 2016 issue of Aviation Consumer. I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting. Thanks for watching.